much for joining us today. My name is Ashley Childs and I'm the Family Consumer Science Agent in Thomas County. And I've been invited today to present with Becca Stackhouse, the Family Consumer Science Agent in Crisp County. We're gonna be discussing different types of cooking oils in the series Made at Home, the Healthy Oils Edition. We're gonna provide you with some tasty recipes, talk a little bit about the nutrition and the flavor profiles of various oils, and then Becca is actually going to demonstrate how to prepare some recipes using the different oils. So today our focus is going to be on sunflower oil, but first we're going to review some information on nutrition for your health just in case you missed our last session. So the dietary guidelines for Americans recommend that women get about one and a half tablespoons and men get between two and two and a half tablespoons of oils each day. Now the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, recommends that 30% or less of the calories that you consume each day should come from fat sources and fewer than 7% from saturated fat. So if you think of the total amount of calories that you eat in one day, 30% or less of those calories should come from fat sources. And then again, 7% or less from saturated fat. Saturated fats are those that are generally solid at room temperature, for example, um, butter. But there are a few exceptions like coconut or palm oils, which do remain as liquids when they're at room temperature. If you've ever been in a grocery store before or maybe a specialty oil store, it can be a little overwhelming if you see how many options are available. So today we're just gonna talk about a couple of plant-based oils and options and ways to use them in your cooking. So first of all, we're gonna talk about unsaturated fats. So LDL cholesterol is low density lipoprotein cholesterol and is referred to as the bad cholesterol because what it does is it delivers cholesterol to the walls of the blood vessels and causes narrowing of the vessel. LDL greatly affects your risk of a heart attack and is a better gauge of your risk than total cholesterol. The lower your LDL cholesterol levels, the lower your risk. So you wanna keep LDL low. Now HDL cholesterol is the high density lipoprotein and is often referred to as the good cholesterol because it helps remove cholesterol from your arteries and is involved in the process of making different substances that your body needs. So some examples of unsaturated fat sources are vegetable oils, soft tub margarines, olive oils, grapeseed, um, fish, nuts, and avocados. And you may have heard or seen before that salmon is good for brain health or maybe avocados reduce inflammation. And it's because of those unsaturated fat molecules that are in those products or in those foods that actually help have, it has those properties um, to reduce inflammation, to promote healthy brains. And again, has those, those good cholesterol, those good HDL levels in it too, or helps, helps to promote good HDL levels. So unsaturated are gonna be your healthy fats. Now saturated fats, you want to use very little of these. Um, so just limit your intake as they can raise those LDL levels. So saturated fats come mostly from animal products like butter, beef, pork, dairy fats. Um, another name for beef fat is tallow. Another name for pork fat is lard but can also come from those tropical oils like coconut palm and palm kernel oils. So again, these are gonna be found, found more in kind of snack foods, um, processed foods, processed meats. So keep these in moderation. The trans fats, you may have seen either this on a nutrition label or on a product where it advertises on the front zero grams of trans fat or no trans fat. Trans fat can be made from vegetable oils through a process called hydrogenation. It's naturally found in small amounts in some animal products like meat, whole milk, and milk products, but it can often be found in processed foods like cakes, cookies, crackers, icings, margarines, microwave popcorn, and then some packaged baked goods, snacks, and frozen foods. So you want to avoid this if these if possible. The partially hydrogenated oils. Um, again, those oils that are made through processing 
can do increase your risk for heart disease. So be sure just to check the ingredient label and make sure that it says zero grams of trans fat. Now some tips for choosing he healthy oils um, for your heart and healthy fats are gonna be to use liquid oils like olive, canola, corn, in place of solid fats like butter, shortening, coconut oil, or lard to replace those. Adding nuts and seeds just as a snack every day or as a salad topper is a great option and helps you to get some more of those good unsaturated fats into your diet. Choosing fish that have omega-3 fats like salmon, trout, and herring, and then limiting saturated fats from processed meats like sausage, bologna, and pepperoni. If you're choosing ground beef or ground turkey, try to go for 90% lean or more, again, to cut back on that saturated fat. Limit your ice cream, baked goods, and heavy creams as again, those can contain trans fats, can contain high levels of saturated fats, and again, are going to raise those LDL, those bad cholesterol levels. Choosing baked, steamed, or broiled over fried foods, reading your nutrition labels to avoid those trans fats and packaged foods like baked goods, snacks, and some frozen foods. They're all good tips for choosing healthy fats and healthy oils. going to be the one that we will focus on today. So it has a high smoke point and is best for searing, browning, and deep frying. And now the smoke point of an oil is where when you heat it, it starts to, to form a smoke. So at higher temperatures, there are also flash points and fire points of oils. Also, you will, this is important because you want to be able to fry the food and fry the oil without the oil catching fire. Um, you will see it in some specialty cooking shows where you do see that flash point or you see that sustained fire. But for the most recipes and the most types of cooking that we will be doing, we don't need that kind of um, that kind of fire. So you will see mono and unsaturated fat percentages listed here. And so all that is, the difference in mono and poly has to do with the chemical structure. So mono unsaturated fats just have one double bond and polyunsaturated have more than one double bond. So monounsaturated percentage here is made up of about 82%. Um, it's 9% polyunsaturated and then about 9% saturated. So again, just a difference, unsaturated, your good fats, saturated fats, not so good fats. So the recipe that Becca is going to be doing using the sunflower flour Sunflower oil um, also does contain some sunflower seeds. So they've got the added benefits that come with those as well. And this is a quinoa with butternut squash and sunflower seeds recipe. And it looks delicious. So as you see, we're featuring butternut squash, which is in season now. Baby spinach, dried cranberries, onion, um, quinoa, stock, or you can, you can use water or stock. Um, sunflower oil and then you're going to top it with sunflower seeds. So I think this is definitely going to be a staple in my pantry or in my recipe book from now on. That I'm going to turn it over to Becca and let her do a recipe demonstration for you. So welcome to today's episode of Made at Home. We're over here by the stovetop because all of our cooking is going to happen on the stovetop today. So we're going to get our pot started here. And we are also have already boiled our quinoa, have our quinoa ready. So we are going to start by heating up some of our oil. So the oil that's featured today is from Oliver Farms. Remember? that oil that's from South Georgia. So make sure you check it out. 
But today we are using this specific one. We are using the sunflower one that is infused. So infused, can you see what that means? It means that we've got some things mixed in here. So before we get started, we're gonna shake it all up and get it all mixed. So in our infused oil here, we've got red peppers in it, black pepper in it, we have oregano, basil, garlic, salt, rosemary, and parsley in it. And so this one actually has a cool story if you go to the Oliver Farms website and read about it. But what we are gonna do is we are using all those spices in our meal for dinner tonight and make enough to take for leftovers for your next meal. So let's get started with our Oliver Farm oil with, we're going to add in a teaspoon to the bottom of our pan here. All those spices. It's so fun to use the spices. But do you know what my other favorite use for an infused oil like this is? Bread, which I may make some of that later and have it with some of this delicious. But we're gonna add that in. We're gonna let that start to simmer and heat up a little bit but what we're adding into that so that it starts to cook is we are adding in a half a cup of an onion. So you can chop that onion and purchase it and start crying and all that. Or one of my favorite things to do to give you some quick easy hacks is go to the freezer section and buy a diced onion. It gives you what you need and if you don't end up using it, it doesn't go bad. Or you only use a half and you got plenty left for your next meal. So we're just gonna add in our onions. I'm gonna turn our temperature down just slightly. So starting with those onions, you're getting those onions nice, soft, and tender. You wanna start getting the translucent color in them, and that's how you kind of tell. And then our next stop to it is we're going to add in our squash um, after about two to three minutes of our onions cooking. Then we're going to add in our quinoa, our stock, or our water, and then just a smidgen of salt. But remember, we've got salt in that infused oil we're using. Let it go about. So, butternut squash is our squash that we're using. So, same dealio here. You can either buy it in that fresh section, which, great, go use some of your local farmer's market. If you've got access to some, it's a great thing to do. But if you don't, the freezer section is a good place to be able to purchase your produce as well. So, this is our butternut squash. We're gonna add in to our onion mixture. So this recipe calls for quinoa, but I actually cooked all my quinoa the other day. So I have some of my pre-cooked mixture of quinoa and rice that we're gonna use in our dish. Then I'm gonna add in that water. We're gonna add in that smidgen of salt. Then we're gonna top it off with a little more of that infused sunflower oil. It is looking scrumptious and delicious, isn't it? So, once we have 
all of that in that pot. We need a lid to cover it. minutes so that it gets ready for us but in the meantime we have something else we're gonna do to get it ready for our dinner tonight so while this is heating and getting ready we're gonna take another pan and this pot has some sunflower seeds so can you see it we're gonna use sunflower seeds and we're going to add some of that scrumptious sunflower oil we've got here and we are going to roast our sunflower seeds here so we're going to turn that eye on we're going to let our sunflower seeds start to get scrumptious over there um, and you're going to wait those are going to also need just a smidgen little bit of salt added on them and then we'll let all that cook we're gonna add a few more things to it. Like, you're gonna need spinach and some cranberries to add to this scrumptious dinner we're making. So, you ready? Let's just watch it cook over here. But, it's ready. 10 minutes are Spinach, cranberries are in there with our squash and our quinoa and our onions. So let's serve it up. This smells and looks delicious. So here is our quinoa butternut squash spinach dish and we used our Oliver Farms um, sunflower infused oil. So grab yours today, get this great smelling. Remember, have some baked bread that you eat with it too. But also, so this dish, it's very much of a vegetable dish. So we've got our butternut squash, we've got our spinach, we've got our onions, but how can you add some protein to this meal? Well, you can add some beans, but you could also add some salmon on top. You could add some chicken, add some steak. Just make sure you're getting your portions in correct sizes. And it's delicious. Make enough to have for the next day. Thank you for joining me with this episode of Our Made at Home. Have a fantastic fall! to say thank you again for joining us today um, for our made at home healthy oils edition so this is just some information about where you can order the georgia grown products and then also contact information for becca and myself so if you have more questions you can reach out to becca or me and then also if you will please just fill out the evaluation at the link listed here and they will also be posted on our facebook pages as well